And we're back on Math Party, people. Anderson here, your math coach. So, in the previous video, what did we do? We went ahead and learned how to solve quadratic equations, where before, in the first one, it was already factored for us. Then, in the next video, we we saw, hey, what if it's not factored for you? Oh, we just have to factor it, and we're good. Now, what I'm going to show you is another, you know, the same stuff, but again, I'm just going to give you a mess that you got to sort through first, and then you're good to go. You already know the skills that you need to solve this. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what we're looking at here. Because remember, what did I show you last video and the one before that? What did we say? Don't we need a zero by itself before we can go ahead and factor, before we can do all this crazy stuff? Absolutely. So notice over here, is there a zero already by itself on the left or the right side? No, there isn't. And so all we need to do here, my party people, and I'm going to show you right now, is move everything to one side, get a zero by itself on the right side or left side, whatever side you want, but just get zero by itself, then you can factor, then you can apply the zero product property, and then you're good. So this video is just a continuation of the previous videos for solving quadratics. Let's go ahead and dive in and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this done. So we have n squared plus 48 equals 14n. Again, like I said, you can't factor until you have a zero by itself. So what I'm gonna do is I notice that this little bugger right there, I can go ahead and move that over to the left side. And I'll do that. I'll subtract 14n from both sides. And what's gonna happen is on the right side it cancels out, but what happens on the left? Well, the thing is you have n squared and you have 48. Neither of those are like terms with 14n, so you have nothing to worry about. It'll simply be n squared minus 14n plus 48 and on the right side that canceled so this just equals zero that's really it all we did was just move one of the pieces over that way we can see that zero by itself on the right side and that's it now we're going to factor apply the zero product property and we're done so here we go so now again the the property here or the factoring we're going to go ahead and say hey what are the factors of c that add up to b Remember the whole AX squared plus BX plus C thing? That's exactly what we're looking at now. So let's go ahead and take care of business. What are the factors of C, the 48, that add up to B, negative 14? Now we have to ask ourselves a slight quick question. And again, I've gone over this plenty of times in my previous videos. So go back to factoring trinomials if you need help. But checking this out right here, we're going to ask ourselves, hey, look, how do we multiply to get a positive 48? Well, they're either both going to be positive or both going to be negative, right? Right. There's no way you can multiply opposite signs and get a positive number. They're either both positive or both negative. They're the same sign. Now, when you look at the middle number, the negative 14, they have to add up to negative 14. Can you add two positives to get negative 14? No. Can you add two negatives to get negative 14? Yes. So what you know right now is that both of the numbers that you're going to use are negative. Here we go. What are the factors of 48? We got 1 times 48. We have 2 times 24. None of those add up to 14 yet. We have 3 times 16. Those don't add to 48 yet, or 14. We have uh, 4 times, what, 12? Those don't add to 14, because that's 16. What about 6 times 8? That'll work. That'll work for sure, because 6 plus 8 is 14. So negative 6 plus negative 8, that's negative 14. And both of them being negative multiplies to a positive 48 as well. So we are good. Here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this right there. We're now going to have n minus 6 times n minus 8. That's going to equal 0. We're feeling pretty good. Now we can apply that zero product property. Again, as a quick refresher, that zero product property just says, hey, look, if you're multiplying this times this, and it equals zero, well, one of these or both of them have to be zero for that to work then. So what I'll do is I'll set each piece, each group equal to zero, find out what that number is, and we're good to go. And just like this free YouTube video right here, my math party people, I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every mistake and a free math class every week, once a week for two hours. Click the link over here to sign up and get started and keep raising that score. Let's get back to the action. So. Let's go ahead and do it here. I'm gonna set n minus six equal to zero. If I add six on both sides, I get n equals six. If I take this one over here, the n minus eight, 
and I set that equal to zero, I'll add eight to both sides and I get n equals eight. And there are my answers. n equals six, n equals eight, b is the answer, and we're good. Now, if you wanna check your work, remember, just like I showed you in the last video, you can plug the number back into the whole equation, check it, boom, you're good. Then take the other number, plug that number in for all the n's, boom, you'll see that that works. And so, there it is, my math part of people. This is, again, not supposed to be super, super, super crazy. There it is, we got it going on. Now what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and just look at a couple more practice problems. So look, number two, this one isn't that crazy. You have n squared equals negative 21 minus 10n. You might be looking at that thinking that it's confusing, but all you have to do is get a zero somewhere on the right side or left side. Just get a zero by itself. So what I'll do, n squared equals negative 21 minus 10n. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll add 21 on both sides. So that's gonna give me n squared plus 21 equals negative 10n. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add 10n on both sides. Again, if you're familiar with solving equations, this should be terribly uh, confusing. Should not be terribly confusing because now we have n squared. The 10n doesn't mix with anything, so it's just plus 10n and then plus 21 equals zero. Now we're good to go. We're good to go. We can go ahead and we can factor zero product property and we're all set. So here we are. Well, let's find the factors of 21 here. What are the factors of positive 21 that add to a positive 10? So again, what are the factors of C that add to B? Don't forget it. So the factors of 21 are gonna be one times 21. That doesn't add to 10. We have three times seven. That adds to 10, we're good. That works right there. And so we can go ahead and take this and split that up into X plus three, or excuse me, N plus three times N plus seven. And there we have it, my math party people. Set that zero product property up and you are good. So here, subtract three on both sides. N equals negative three. And then over here, subtract seven on both sides. And we have ourselves N equals negative seven. Right there. And so boom, those are our answers. Negative three and negative seven. That is choice C and we are set. So what I'm gonna do for the remainder of this video is I'm gonna show you some more unique problems here where more needs to be done or different things kinda of need to be done. But the principle really remains the same on math party people. It really does remain the same. The idea is this, get the zero on its, by itself. Get it by itself. Whether it's the left side or the right side, get it by itself. Then from there, then you factor. That's it. That is it. So here we go. We have n squared plus 7n minus 5 equals negative 5. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 5 to both sides because I want to get rid of this right there. I want that 0 by itself. But what I also notice is that it cancels out right there too. And so what we have is n squared plus 7n equals 0. Sweet. I got that 0 on the right side and ended up canceling out, making it a lot easier for me. And now we'll use the greatest common factor factor it out, and we're set. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna factor out n from both of those, leaving on the inside n plus seven, and that's equal to zero. So now we'll apply that zero product property, setting n equal to zero, which no work needs to be done. And then over here, the n plus seven, set that equal to zero. And we subtract seven on both sides, canceling it out right there on the left giving us n equals negative seven. So those are our answers. n equals zero, n equals negative seven, and there we have it. Again, my math party people, this is just a continuation from the previous video because I already showed you how to factor. I already showed you how to solve it when you need to factor. Now, all I'm just showing you in this video is, hey, look, you can see these problems in so many different forms, but the really the rule remains the same. For you to be able to apply that zero product property and make it easy, you just need a zero by itself, and then you'll factor, and then you'll do your thing, and you're set. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other crazy ones and see if we can find some, because I want to show you like every type of example that we can really see. So let's try out number 76. Let's try number 76. Because if you're looking at number 76 and you forget that you need a zero by itself, 
Well, my party people, you'll be looking at this and you'll be saying, well, uh, what are the factors of 29 that add to negative 13? You'll make that mistake. You don't have a zero yet on the right side, so you can't do that. So first things first, get that zero by itself. We have m squared minus 13m plus 29 equals negative 7. And so what we'll do here is we will go ahead and add 7 on both sides first so we can get that zero on the right side. m squared minus 13m plus 36 equals zero. Booyah. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find the factors of 36 that add up to negative 13. Notice that we have a positive 36, so that tells me that they're either both positive or both negative, the factors. And because they add to a negative 13, that tells me that they're both gonna be negative because a negative plus a negative stays negative. So with that, booyah, let's go and figure this out. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons. You're gonna get access to guided practice just like this. Worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online. And lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way when you take the test, there's no test anxiety. There's no pressure because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more. So take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. We can have one times 36, nope. Two times 18, nope. 3 times 12? Nope. 4 times 9? Yeah, that'll work. If we have a negative 4 and a negative 9, that'll work. That'll definitely work. Those will add to negative 13. So, with that said, factor it out. We have ourselves m minus 4, m minus 9 equals 0. Now we apply that zero product property and we're good to go. So, let me take this over here, move over. Goodbye, and that's it, we're set. So we're gonna go ahead and have m minus four equals zero and m minus nine equals zero. We add four to both sides over here, cancels out, and we have m equals positive four. On the right side, or on this, the right equation over here, we add nine to both sides and we have m equals nine. And there we have it. Our answers are four and positive nine, four and positive nine. There we have it. I'm gonna find one more example here. Let's find another one. Let's go ahead and keep cracking at this. I think that if I go over past 100, I should see some pretty unique ones here. Yeah, let's go ahead and check stuff like this out, man. Like this is pretty good, I like this. Let me see if I can find one with multiple terms. Yeah, something like this. Something like this, or even actually, I think I saw one that I really, really liked. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do this one here, 101. We have 11n squared minus 8n minus 20 equals 10n squared. Again, it doesn't matter. Just get a zero by itself when it comes to quadratics. So we have 11n squared minus 8n minus 20 equals 10n squared. If I go ahead and subtract that 10n squared from both sides, what happens is it cancels out right over there, and I'm left with 1n squared here. And there we have it, and that equals zero. Booyah. Now we're gonna be looking at the factors of negative 20 that add up to negative eight. Now we have negative 20 as the C term, so that means that one's gonna be positive and one's gonna be negative. And since it adds up to a negative eight, that means that the negative number is the larger number. So we just need a factor pair of negative 20 that has a difference of eight and will make the bigger number negative. Here we go. We have one times 10, two, or excuse me, one times 20, two times 10, and four times five. The one that's gonna work is right there, two times 10. For the simple reason being that if you make the 10 the negative one, well, guess what? The difference is eight, negative eight, and they multiply to that negative 20. And so there we go. We'll have n plus two, n minus 10, set that equal to zero, zero product property, and we're set to go. So with that said, booyah, we've got ourselves n plus two equals zero, 
n minus 10 equals 0. We'll subtract 2 on both sides, n equals negative 2. Add 10 on both sides, n equals 10. Booyah, booyah, and the answer is, don't get confused, it is D. And so there it is, my math party people, seriously. There it is. I really am excited for you because if you're up to this point in learning algebra and you're really getting this down and you feel like with some practice you're good to go, that means you understand a lot more than you might think. All right? So, as always, I really hope you enjoy this, but make sure that after this, you go into those worksheets if you're in the course or program, go into those worksheets, get right onto it with the speed drills, do your job, and make sure that you can crush this at the end of the day. All right? Because after this, well, you're really looking at one more thing, and it's going to be solving really any type of quadratic equations in all different ways and shapes and sizes. And once you have that down, you are golden. And so again, I'm Coach Anderson. As always, appreciate having you. Let's go ahead and look forward, keep raising that score, and let's be happy at the end of the day. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you want to raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, but you're going to get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.